he received God's servant. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We yet pray for home. Amen. Amen. As I was having my walk in the morning, God said to me, the reason why he asked a woman to submit is that they will not. Amen. You see, God doesn't give empty instructions. If God said, don't do something, is that you know you have tendency to do it. That was while I was having a walk in the morning. The reason why he said the man is the head of the family is that the woman would like to lead. And if you check every home where there are confusion, the woman wants to take the lead. The reason why he said women should submit, men should take the lead, is that he know a time will come, a man wants to submit. He said of leading. That's the truth. And uh, most of the time, you see a woman, whenever you see chaos, is that there is an exchange of rule. Exchange of what? Roles and responsibility. The man have chose to submit. And you know men don't submit. They are not wired to submit. They just have an alternative plan to your plan. You will think the man is quiet, but he has what? An alternative plan to your plan. That's his quietness. So God said man should be the head. He know that men have tendency to take the back seat. If that is what you want, have it your way. Praise God. And the reason why I tell women to submit you know, God doesn't speak empty words. It's because, you know, many women will like to take the lead of the home. And we saw it in Adam. And we saw it in who? In Eve. God never assigned Eve to provide the food. But he went out of, out of what? To look for food. God never asked Adam to eat anything the wife provided. It's your question. But the man decided to submit exchange of rules. Exchange of rules. We are going to pray for the woman. I keep on saying no woman should desire that his voice is the one leading the family. And no man should desire that he's the one submitting to his wife. Submission of a man is not love. It's destruction. Leadership of a woman is not love. It is heading to destruction. Either in the now or on the long run. We are going to pray, Lord, in all our homes. Let everyone involved abide by their calling. Amen. Women are called to submit. Amen. Men are called to lead. Let's lift up our voice and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we commit our family, our homes into your hand that everyone shall abide in their calling. Everyone shall abide in their calling. There shall no more the story of exchange of roles. Every man shall abide in their calling. If you are married, start praying for yourself. Lord, I receive grace. I receive grace to abide in my calling. I pray for my wife for grace to abide in her calling. No more exchange of roles. No more exchange of role. No more exchange of role. Thank you, faithful Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. This evening, we start stand on the behalf of the families in the bodies of Christ. That no more exchange of roles. Everyone shall abide in his calling. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. No more manipulation. Amen. No more manipulation. Amen. No more nonchalant attitude. Amen. With the men, no more nonchalant, I don't care, irresponsibility. No more in among the men in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And among the women, no more stylish manipulation. Amen. Everyone shall abide in their calling. 
God that instituted marriage knew that role that he appointed to each one of us is what will make the journey great. I pray for baptism in our assembly. In all our churches, men shall be responsible. Women shall be submissive. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, faithful Father. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Please take your seat. Hallelujah. Amen. Tell the woman next to you and say, abide in your calling. Abide. Say it one more time. Abide. If it look like a single, say when you reach there, abide in your calling. Amen. Amen. Tell the single that next to you and say, abide in your calling when you get there. Amen. I was just walking in the morning and the Holy Ghost began to tell me that God doesn't speak empty words. He says his word are instruction. So when he said to man, take charge, is that we have tendency to abandon our charge. When he told women, submit, is that you have tendency to want to lead. Praise the Lord. And I know why he told women not to lead. They are too emotional. And I know why he said men should submit. We are too rigid. So God said to the woman, I know your nature. You will emotionally put the house on fire. So submit plus that weakness. And to the man, he said, I know you have tendency to be irresponsible. If not irresponsibility, how can a woman be feeding a man? Where do you get appetite to eat? But you see, men have tendency to be what? Irresponsible. Not taking charge. So he told the man, you are the head. I pray that this understanding will be done on everyone under the sound of my voice. Amen. That we we'll all take our appropriate position and responsibility. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, today we had a great time waiting on the Lord. Thank God for the departure of uh, our And I'm sure you are condone, you are sending your condolence and you are also, in a way, thankfully mourning the passing away of a man who has affected this nation greatly. Amen. It is my prayer when our time is over, it will be a national joy Amen. by virtue of your impact. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Tributes has been pouring in. And everyone keep mentioning. How is a man. That respect other people's. Divergence opinion. Is a man who walk with others. And we saw it when he came to power. Every department were functioning. Praise the Lord. Amen. He was a man who believed in we. Not I. And uh, we pray that God will console the nation and God will raise many leaders that will follow suit. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I said praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He has given us holiday to reflect and to make our waiting on the Lord in the fourth month to be an exciting one. Amen. The Lord will console the family. Amen. No matter how old the man is, old is gold. Old is what? Is gold. So they are mourning him. But God of all comfort will comfort the nation, Amen. comfort his immediate family, Amen. and comfort the body of Christ. Amen. They were saying about him in his church that when he's at home, he doesn't want to be recognized. He will tell them, I have come as a Christian. That's what the, well, that's what the priest there said, that when he's at home, he doesn't want to be recognized. He wants to attend church service as a Christian. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. The Lord is good. I said, the Lord is good. Now, I've been sharing on, we have been looking at the release of power. And we stopped at a crucial point yesterday 
and we concluded with a statement that I'm sure it should be alive in every one of us. And what was that statement? The statement is this. There can never be a release without power. There will never be a release from anything without power in place. And I will show us why. Behind every captivity is a strong man. Somebody is not married, there is a strong man. There is someone that is stronger than her or than him. I want you to, I want the studio to be posting the scripture as we go. Behind everything that is not in place for your life, there is a strong man. A strong man. You are not getting the scripture. There is a strong man. Go to Luke gospel. There is a strong man. Behind whatever is not happening for you, there is a force responsible for it. That's why the Bible says, when a strong man keeps his good, when a strong man keep his good. I know the Bible talks about the devil that he openeth not his door to his prisoner. When generational causes capture you, you are like a prisoner in the hand of the devil. And he will not open his door for any reason. He will keep you in that bondage forever. That's why you see some people have negative identity and their identity tend to traverse the whole of their life. They say that man is poor. And he finished school, he's still poor. He married, he's still poor. Even at his death, he's still poor. Then you see somebody age 17, uh, sorry, age 22, age 23, age 24, and he keep on telling the same story. If he lock you up with barrenness, it doesn't matter the age. He will never say, oh, you are getting old. Let me allow you to give birth to one children. He opened not his door to his prisoner. Now, let's read several out of the account they have put there. Start from 26. He said, or start from 25. 25. Mark chapter 3 and verse 25. He said, and if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan rise up against himself, and be divided, he cannot what? He cannot stand, but had an end. Every work of Satan in your life will have an end today. Because there is what divide him. There is a power that divide him. Now look at the next verse, verse 27. It says, no man can enter into a strong man house and spoil his good except he will first bind the strong man and then he will spoil his house. I don't know whether you are following. You know, we are talking about release. So what this scripture is saying, no one can make a release in the house of a strong man and spoil his good, in other words, and release his goods. Except he will first bind the strong man and do what? And then he will spoil his house. You know what that, this scripture implies? It implies 
if you are in the hand of Satan, you need to be stronger than him. Before you can bind him, and while it is bound, then you enter into his house and set yourself free. That's what, give us another account. I think account of Luke or Matthew. They are all saying the same. He said, when a strong man armed, when a strong man armed, keep his palace, his goods are in peace. The next verse. But when a stronger than he shall come upon him and overcome him, he taketh from him all his armor wherein he trusted and divide his spoil. Did you understand now? You see this account? It's a bit elaborate. He said, but when a stronger man, what makes us stronger than our situation? Divine empowerment. Divine empowerment. Look at the account of Luke. He said, but when a stronger than he shall come upon him and overcome him, he taketh from him all his armor wherein he trusted and then divides his spoil. And let's go to, I think, Isaiah or Jeremiah. He talks about God has ransomed Jacob from the hand of him that is stronger than him. Listen to me. There are certain things in your life. The reason why they have been there is that they are stronger than you. They are stronger than you. The reason why everything around you look like poverty and suggest poverty is that the spirit of poverty has overpowered you. It's not because you desire it. You are gradually become the spoil of poverty. Your mates are rising, but you can't rise. Your acquaintance are making wave in terms of financial breakthrough. You can't. Your age mate in school are graduate. You can't. Your age mate are keeping home, but you can't. You have the look, but no ability. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Some years back, one of our close elder was in my front in Makilingo. And uh, it was a sister who arranged for them to see me. And I said, what are they coming to see me? And they said, they don't have a child. They don't have a child? It's now a testimony. I said, they don't have a child? I look at Elder Ogutu and his wife. Look at a beautiful man. Look at a man. How can they not have a child? It was on Saturday, if I will remember very well. And there was a holy anger in me. And I erupted in prayer. And I said, this month. I asked them, how many years? They told me how many. I said, this month, God will intervene for you. Amen. And immediately I spoke, a stronger man. No one is stronger than God. Amen. Step in and unlock that womb. Where with the son in the Kisumu, I think on uh, is it on Friday, we're together. Big boy now, even almost as tall as his father. A stronger man. This is real life issue. There are things that you are suffering is because the one perpetuating it is stronger than you. A woman in your house, now you kick him every now and then. Now you keep malice. Now you fight. You know why? That anger, that bitterness, that unforgiveness, that immaturity. Because for me, a woman say you are stupid. Is it really true? So if you are stupid, his miss is stupid. Because <laughs> if you are truly stupid, what is he doing with a stupid person? For me, Woman word doesn't carry weight. They actually say opposite. 
Because by their nature, they want the best. So when he says you are useless, he means to say you are the best man on earth. So if somebody says you are the best and you know, why are you going to slap her? He meant, I mean, if you are useless, what is he doing in Mr. Useless house? Because his missus is useless. And if somebody is abusing himself, why do you get bothered that he's abusing you? But you know why you get foamed up, reacting? There is a demon in you that has made you not to see things in the right way. You know, Jesus healed some people. He healed a man. The man said he was seeing men walking. <laughs> he was seeing men walking like, why did he put it? Like a tree. You know, when you see a tree, you will cut it down. Your wife just said something very nasty, very stupid. You know why you get angry? You are like that man that Jesus touched your eyes, but you are still seeing things upside down. Already the Bible tells you that women are what? A weaker vessel. So you are strong vessels. So why do you descend so low to react based on the prompting of the what? Of the weaker vessel. That's why you slap the woman. There is a demon that take hold of you. Look at that scripture again. It says, for the Lord, for the Lord had redeemed Jacob and ransomed him from the hand of him that was stronger than he. Every time we do anything contrary to scripture, there is a force operating in you that is stronger than you. That's how it goes. Don't let anybody cheat you. That your parents are poor does not guarantee that you be poor. No. It's not a license for you to be poor. But there are sub certain habits that work in your parents that you learn it by observation. That also find its way into your life by virtue of, is it genetic? It finds its way into your life by virtue of blood connection. And when you came into Christ, they show you the new way that is in life, that, that is in what? That is in Christ Jesus, but you reject it. Remember Romans chapter 8, verse 1. He said, now there is no more condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the, for the uh, which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh. You are still behaving like your father. But after the spirit. Go to the next one. Why? Was there no more condemnation? He said, for the law of the spirit, not your tradition. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made me free, has released me from the law of sin and death. So every situation in life operating by certain law. I've said it over and over. Look for the best Muganga to make me to beg till I die. He's wasting his time. Because there is a law that I'm operating. And that law, the one that instituted the law, back the law up. He make the law to happen. The Bible says a libra soul shall be made fat. Who will make him fat? The one that ordained the law of liberality. There are people you can't make to be poor. There are people you can't make to, be, uh, to stop making progress. You may get angry. It's just like some people when they leave a church, they want the church to close. When, when, the fact, when they leave, it will close. When it doesn't close, they attack it from outside. If you leave a place, leave that place now. You can't be going forward driving with a rear mirror, except you are mad. That's why their end will never end well. Because they are driving forward what they call forward, but they are using what? Rear mirror. When you try it in natural driving, what happens? You have accident. That's why some people will leave a church. They will say they curse them. Nobody curse you. You are driving forward and you are using what? Rear mirror. 
You say God asks you to leave, leave. And if it is who decided to leave, leave. But you can't carry order along. That's why curses will never depart from their life. Destruction will never depart from their life. Because nobody stops you from where you are going. Nobody bothers about you. Why do you bother where you left? I woke up this morning with a holy anger. Everyone in any corner who have heard from this ministry, who this ministry has been a blessing in any way, and they left here troubling you, troubling the system, I give them in the next seven months, if they don't stop, they will go to the lower part of grief. Amen. Watch my word. Amen. I have spoken to the God of this commission, no more sparing. Amen. You are either here or you are somewhere else. Joe, uh, 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 Sammy pray. He said, oh Lord, let them go. Those who desire to kill me, to destroy my soul. Everyone that desire to see the end of this ministry. In the next seven months, we will see their end. We will attend their obituary service. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are in April. Count it. Because nobody leaves and I go after them. Nobody. I'm a very peaceful man. All I will ask you, where are you now? I'm in the other church. Make sure you are serving. God bless you. Because the church where I started is not where I am. Movement is allowed, but wickedness is not allowed. Movement is allowed, but wickedness is not allowed. And God said, I will not acquaint the wicked. That means I will punish them. Why did they do that? They are possessed. The Lord has ransomed Jacob from the hand of him that was stronger than him. Behind every ungodliness in our life is a hand that is stronger than us. Why were the children of Israel in Egypt? They were overpowered. They were overpowered. And that's why God sent Moses. And upon Moses answered the call, God placed a rod in his hand. Friends, there can never be a release without power. And I mean divine power in place. Amen. I see your release. Amen. I see God releasing you. Amen. Anything that is obstructing your destiny, Amen. I see God releasing you. Amen. I say I see God releasing you. Amen. I say I see God releasing you. For the law, I know the law. He said, all power belongs to me. He was, he's all powerful. That is why he's, he's all endowed to make a release. Amen. Read the scripture there. For the Lord has ransomed, the Lord has redeemed Jacob and ransomed him from the hand of he, uh, from, from, from him that was stronger than he. Go to the next verse. Therefore, Therefore, when there is a release, this is what follows. Therefore, they shall come and sing in the height of Zion and shall flow together to the goodness of the Lord for wheat and for wine and for oil and for the young of the flock and of the herds, and their souls shall be as watered garden, and they shall not sorrow anymore at all. I thought I will hear you louder, amen. amen. This service terminates all form of sorrow amen. in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. But there has to be what? A ransoming, there have to be a release. Verse 31, verse 30, verse 12, uh, verse 12 is available. But not until verse 11 is in place. Let's take it then, you can see the flow. For the Lord has redeemed Jacob and ransomed him from the hand of him that was stronger than he. You know, he said, when the stronger man come, he will bind. And then he will spoil the goods. So Jacob was a ransom. Was a spoil. 
But when God came in, he redeemed him. He ransomed him. And therefore, he was no longer a captivity anymore. He said, therefore, they shall come and sing. You will sing this morning. I say, from now onward, songs of joy will come from you. Therefore, because of the release, until there is a release, there can't be your fullness. What your mate is doing, you just discover you can't do it. You will have physical ability, but you can't. But after the release, therefore they shall come and sing in the heart of Zion and shall flow together, not to the evil that has been following them. I command barrenness upon everyone that is listening to me. I, come, I call barrenness to come to an end. Barrenness in childbearing. Barrenness in the works of your hand. Barrenness in fulfillment of life. It comes to an end. Therefore they shall come and sing in the height of Zion. And shall flow together. So the goodness was there before. But the one that was stronger than them were denying them. And they shall flow together to the goodness of the Lord. For wheat, for wine, and for oil, and for the youngs of the flock and of the herd, and their soul shall be as a water garden, and they shall not sorrow anymore at all. Say, that is my portion. Shout it louder. Claim it with violent amen. Now let's go back to those accounts of a stronger man. Any of them. Give us Luke or Matthew. Luke 11. Give us from verse 20. Now. He said but. Look at it. He said but. If I with the finger of God cast out devil. No doubt the kingdom of God is come upon you. When a stronger man armed. Kept his palace. His goods are intact. But when a stronger man than he shall have come upon him, first of all, and overcome him. Number two, he take from him all his armor, wherein he trusted and divide his spoil. There can never be a release without a demonstration of power. Power must be in place before there is a release. Understand that. When you have that understanding, there will be willingness and endurance to pay the price for acquisition of power. Amen. Nobody pick power on the floor. No. No. Nobody pick power on the floor. There is a price to pay for power. You don't pick power by jocketing around. You see, we are waiting on the law. We have to abandon everything as we are waiting. We have to come and hear the word so that the fasting can ferment our heart so that as our flesh is lower, the word can enter. Amen. I was congratulating a woman today. I was like her counselor. In 2013, 2000, 2013, 2017. He's a politician. You remember the woman? And she came very disappointed in Nairobi. I don't know who gave her my name. Very disappointed. And he said, Pastor, I don't, I've just come to ask, but I've made up my mind to dump Raila. I want to leave ODM. I don't want to have anything to do with them. I've been let down. And I heard this from God told me, don't leave him because he lost. Stay with him. Stay with him. And that time is not easy to stay. If you are going to walk in power, you must be willing to pay the price. I saw her name on television. That's why I call her. Because it's one of, it's one of the men, women appointed now to sort out Rahila with his deputy. So I said, can you see what I told you? There's another day when it comes to power. Don't give up. 
keep on looking for it. You don't get it this month, you will get it next month. You don't get it in this prophetic fast, just see, go for it until you are sure it's in your hand. There can never be a release without power. And power is not cheap. You didn't hear what he said, Niza? He said, they that wait. Who want to wait? Everybody want to pick. He said, they that wait upon the law shall renew their strength. So the price for renewal of strength is waiting. Psalm 63, verse 1 to 3. Psalm 63, verse 1 to 3. Psalm 63 and verse 1 to 3. Look at what he says. He says, Oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. Who wants to wake up early? My soul thirsted for thee, and my flesh longed for thee in a dry and a thirsty land. Who wants to stay without water? Wherein there is no water. What are you looking for? To see thy power. There is always condition before empowerment. There is no feed or nature of religion where power is free. There is none. Go to a cult. They will say, bring your wife. Bring your firstborn. So even in the kingdom, the power is available, but at a cost. Only those who afford the cost demonstrate the power. Hallelujah. I see you demonstrating the power of God. To see thy power. So the power of God can be seen. As I have seen thee. In the sanctuary. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. And that's why now we begin to look. At the source of divine empowerment. And now we just take one. We continue. I'm almost changing my mind about the covenant day. Because we need to take as many. As possible. You can't afford to be a rodless child of God. You can't what? afford to be a rodless. Every child of God that has manifested on the earth has a rod. Moses has a rod. You can't afford to be a child of God without power. You can't. So we begin to look at what? The authentic source of divine empowerment. In other words, why are we looking at it? We want to know how to release the power. Amen. You need to have it to release it. Amen. You need to have it to what? To release it. You can see I've just released some. Watch, you will hear news. Amen. Anyone that will not take his mouth off BCI and his member, they are in danger. Amen. Tell them when they see them that they say they are in ICU. Tell them. Because there is no one, there is no ministry we say shall not be well with. We have absolutely mind our business. So it's time for them to mind, mind their business or they face a damn consequence, including life. Because there are Pharaoh that we know here. Yes, sir. Leave a place. Move on. Authentic source of divine empowerment. When you know the source of a thing, then you can acquire it and use it. And I want to tell you the first instrument for release of God's power is the word of God. The word of God. And I want you to listen very well. The word of God. The, the word of God is, listen to this, the word of God is an authentic source of God's word. An authentic source of God's power. The word of God is an authentic source of God's power. Ecclesiastes chapter number 8 and verse 4. I will read two scriptures to establish that. He said, where the word of a king is, there is power. And who may say unto him, what doest thou? Now, Jesus is the king of kings. So, wherever, whatever 
God's word says, inside that word, there is the power of God. Is that clear? Is that clear? That means every word of Christ carry power. So therefore, an encounter with the word of God is an encounter with God's power. An encounter with the word of God is an encounter with God's power. God's word and God's power are not separatable. You can't separate them. Wherever the word of a king is, there is power. John chapter 10 and from verse 35. When you encounter the word of God, you have encountered the power of God. Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God unto salvation. Romans chapter 1 verse 16. Now look at John. Start from 34. Jesus answered them, Is he not written in your law? I said, can you imagine? I said, the moment I said it, the power to make you is there. Amen. I said, ye are gods. Ye are God. Why are you God? If he called them God unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken. So when the word of God comes to you, God's power has come to you. And when God's power in you, you are God to every natural thing. So an encounter with the word of God is an encounter with the power of God. Is that, is that sinking in? Is that clear now? That's why whatever God will do, his word will get it done. Whatever God's person or personality will get done, his word will equally get it done. Psalm 107 and verse 20. Psalm 107 and verse 20. That's why Satan will do everything to make sure you are religious but not pay attention to his word. Because religiosity doesn't make you God on earth, but his word does. Look at it. They were expecting God somewhere. You know whom he sent? He sent his word. And his word healed them. And delivered them from their destruction. Whatever God's personality we do, his word we do it. We do the same. Because they carry equal power. Is somebody getting that word clear? Carry. Now Hebrew chapter 4 and verse and verse 8, oh sorry, verse 12, Hebrew chapter 4. It said, for the word of God is quick and what? Weak and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joint and marrow and is a discerner of the thought and intent of the heart. The word of God is what? Is powerful. The word of God is powerful. Why is his word powerful? Go to Psalm 63. Sorry. John chapter 63. I read from verse 62. John 63 and verse number 62. John 6. 62 uh, John 6 verse 62. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. He said and what if I shall see the son of man ascending up where he was before? That was the question. It is the spirit that quickened. The flesh profited nothing. The word that I speak unto you they are spirit and they are life. Now, let me interpret that for you. They are spirit and they are life. Let's go to Luke chapter 4, verse 18. Luke 4, 18. 
What came on Jesus was the spirit. But it translated into empowerment. Look at it. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach, power to preach. To do what? To preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. To preach deliverance to the captive and the recovering of sight to the blind. To set at liberty. You know, you need power to accomplish anything. When the spirit of God confirmed as the word, the word of God, a spirit of empowerment. Hallelujah. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the spirit into the wilderness. Now, if you go to verse 14, you will see the outcome of the journey. Verse 14, and Jesus returned in what? In the power of the spirit into Galilee. And there went out forcefully. His life has been covered. Everyone that your life has been covered. After this word. You will explode in fame. In the name of Jesus Christ. And there went out. Nothing could stop. And there went out a fame of him. I decree the fame of this ministry. Go out now. In the name of Jesus Christ. And there went out. Moshe was given to his fame. And there went out. A fame of him throughout all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogue, being glorified of all. That would be your testimony. I said that would be the testimony of someone here. Amen. So the word of God is the capsule power of God. The word of God is the capsule of his power. So an encounter with the war is an encounter with the power of God. And when you speak this power, you make a release. When you speak the word of God, you make a release. You make a release. The word of God is equal to the power of God. That is the question. The word of God is equal to the power of God. So when you speak the word of God, you have released power into motion. Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah chapter 55. What a service. Verse 8. Isaiah chapter 55. He said, for my thought are not your thought. Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. <laughs> He's the one saying it. He said, for as the heaven are higher than the earth, so are my way higher than your way, and my thought than your thought. For as the rain, listen to this, you can see everywhere is green. Everywhere is what? It's green now. Before they were brown. When the rain came, it effected a change. That God is now giving illustration that as the rain come and effect a change in the environment, so is my word. He said, for as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but water the earth and made it, made it bring forth and bore, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So, you see that? So, my word is like that. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in, thing, in the things whereunto I send it. Now, if you are a child of if you are a child of God, born again by the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, you are Abraham's seed. Is that correct? So whatever work in Abraham can work in your life. There was something that ransomed the family of Abraham. It is called barrenness. It is called what? Barrenness. Now in Genesis, in Genesis chapter 18, and I read from verse 7, 7 to 12. Genesis 18 verse 7 to 12. Abraham had no child. In verse 7, he said, And Abraham ran unto the herds and fetched a calf tender and good and gave it unto the young man and he hasted to dress it. And he took the butter 
and milk. You see, up to today, if you don't give, your life won't change. He took the butter and the milk. Remember, he doesn't know them. And the calf, which he has dressed and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree and they did eat. And they said unto him, that is the voice of God. And they said unto him, where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, behold, in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee. Is the word they are speaking now. I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah, thy wife, shall have a son. Shall have a son. And Sarah had it in the tent, in the, in the tent door, which was behind him. Now, Abraham and Sarah were old, well stricken in age, and it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. Therefore, Sarah laughed within herself. And you know, they say the word of God is powerful. It can discern even your thought. Yes. So, Sarah laughed within, and they could hear because they were speaking the word of God to him, yes. to her. Within herself, saying, After I am worse old, shall I have pleasure? My Lord, leave alone. Even if I have, if I have pleasure, look at the man. My Lord, being old also. And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore, see the Lord said, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of a shorty bear a child which I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? You know the Lord and his word, they are the same. In other words, is anything too hard for the word of God? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life. And Sarah shall have a son. Turn to chapter 21. Turn to chapter 21. Look at what happened. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. The word of God and God, they are the same. Praise the Lord. That's why I say from today. Speak the word of release in that areas of captivity. Speak the word for your release. No matter what the opposition is saying, speak the word. Speak the word. You had the man. He says, speak the word only and thy servant shall be healed. He said, I'm a man under authority. I say unto one, go it, and he goeth. And I say to another one, come, and he cometh. Matthew chapter 8 and verse 8. So go out there as a child of God and begin to make your release. Begin to make what? Your release. By using what? By using the word of God. I am whom God say I am. I'm not my enemy opinion. You are not the opinion of your, of, your, of, your, of, your, of your county. You are not the opinion of your town. You are not the opinion of men. You are God's opinion. So fire that opinion with the word of the Lord. Look at the centurion. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that thou should come under my roof. Because I know your word and your person, you carry the same weight. But speak what? The word only. But you see, today people don't like the word. They want to go somewhere where they put one chemical on their nose and they are rolling on the floor. They got a man of God in town the other day at the airport. He has something when he fix it on his hand. When he touch you, you will fall down. You don't need all those gimmicks. People don't need to fall down to be transformed. They only need to, their mind need to be renewed. Say, be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind. Upgrade your, the information base of your heart. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. I said, praise God. Hallelujah. I said, praise God. Hallelujah. The centurion said, speak the word only. You remember, Jesus also told uh, Martha, you have come yourself with too many things. One thing is important. And Mary have chosen that good part. The good part is the part of the word. Anyone you see not making progress in church, they are there religiously. Nobody traded the word and failed. 
the centurion say, no, I don't need, you don't need to come to my house. You don't need to come to my house. Speak the word only. Look at it. And my servant shall be healed. I thought the Bible said the Lord is the one that healed us. His word also healed. Amen. I am the Lord that healed thee. I am the Lord that is he sent my war and healed my disease. I am the Lord, your healer. Now, when the Lord doesn't want to come, he will send his word. And my servant shall be healed. You don't need to come. Just send the word and my servant. So the word will do what God will do. God make release. His word make release. Release it into the atmosphere. And establish your release. In the name of Jesus Christ. God himself demonstrated in Genesis chapter 1. He saw darkness. He changed the darkness by using his word. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. And the earth was what? Was without form. Void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. What happened? And God said. Whatever God said from this moment is what he saw in verse 31. And the Bible said they were very good. I speak life into your life. Every project in your hand. There shall be a supernatural provision. God was not stranded. You will not be stranded. God was not ashamed with darkness. Your life will never be full of shame anymore. Luke chapter 21 and verse 15. Luke chapter 21 and verse number 15. Look at what he said. For I will give you a mouth. Look at your neighbor and say you have a mouth. Tell him, I'm also glad. You may have two in form of function. But I can see one physical one. You know, there are people that can speak a lot. It looks like you have five mouths. Amen? But whether you like it is a mouth. It's only it's effective in speaking. But everybody has mouth. Tell your neighbor, don't be jealous of me, please. Tell him in Kiswahili. I know in Kiswahili it will be very bad. Uh, don't be jealous of me. You have one mouth. Tell him, you have one mouth? And I have one. God never gave me two. And gave you one. So I'm not the reason why you are where you are. Maybe I know how to use my own better than yours. He said, For I will give you a mouth and what? And a wisdom. Which all your adversary shall never be able to gain say resist. In other words, you begin to make release. Speak the word. Where is the wisdom? First Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 24. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24. What did he say? He put it very categorically there. He said, but unto them which are called, and you know you are called, both Jew and Greek, Christ, the power, are you seeing that? Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. So the day God gave you Christ, he has given you wisdom. Now, make your release by making utterance. Am I ministering to you? How many of you are getting what I'm talking about? Yes. Speak. We have a beautiful testimony for this church yesterday. It will be shared at the appointed time. It will be shared at the appointed time. An obvious no became yes yesterday. Obvious no. No that I've had for over five years. It became yes yesterday. Why? We keep on speaking. We keep on speaking. We keep on speaking. He said the word of God is a hammer. It's a matter of patience. If you can hit any stone with hammer, it is the stone that we give up, not the hammer. Keep on speaking into your life. Keep on making a release. Keep on making a release. You are hearing a man that has proved it. Almost 30 years I have proved it. That when I speak, something happens. That right is not the reserve of the pastor. It is given to every child of God. Make a release. 
testimony abound. Amen. One day our sister there, what, what is your name again? Uh, Barry walked into my office many years ago. And how many years did you say then? He said seven years I've been believing God for a child. I am not a fake pastor. I have testimony. Amen. That's why we keep your photos. <laughs> Before and after. <laughs> so I don't have a child. Oh, they say this. They say that. They say this. Uh, and they were threatening where he was coming from. I said, when God changed your position, is that, you, is that what I told you? If God brought you to BCI, is that maybe there, they are to lay foundation. He has changed your surgeon. He has referred you here. I say you will have a child. She's there. I'm sure it's family planning that has been helping her. Otherwise by now she'll have five or six. The first one came. It was like a joke. The second one. How many are there now? You want to stop there or I prophesy another one? <laughs> okay, let me spare you. You, you, you remember... What is her name? Uh, Phoebe. Or is it Phoebe? Not Phoebe. He has another name. I said a Taita lady. In uh, Bombolulu. The sister to Lucy. I don't need anybody to say I'm a man of God. Hallelujah. I know it like I know I'm a man. Amen. You can't know me more than myself. Yes. How do you know a man of God? He said it and it come to pass. Amen. I have cataloged everywhere I have been. Yeah. I was in Kisumu on Friday. A lawyer jumped out from a car and walked towards me. I was just looking at her and he said, I heard that you are coming here. That's why I have come. And I have come to your hotel so that I can see you. I know you will be very busy. He said, do you remember me? I said, I can't. You know, some people have expanded and enlarged. And <laughs> I said, I can't. So I tried to compress the figure. <laughs> then I saw the face. I said, oh, wow, 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 wow. I said, it's like I knew. He said, I was in choir. And uh, I used to sing. And when I finished school, all hope were lost. There was no chances for me. To, I will ever go to higher institution. And I was crying. And you came. I said, hey. And you came and held my hand and prayed for me. And took me to your, to your office. And wrote a check of 12000 and gave it to me and said, this is a covenant sin. Start with this. He said, today, I'm an advocate of high court in Kenya. Yeah. Yeah. I live in Nairobi, but I've come. And he pulled a man, very handsome man, and said, this is my husband. His name is Joseph. He said, we've been planning to come to Mombasa to share with the brethren that they should listen to you. I said, you need to come and tell them. I'm not the one who called myself. You may not like my face, but you can't dispute my calling. I have testimony of testimony of testimony of testimony. That lady walk into our house in Mombolulu and say, every time I conceive, a child will come out and laugh to me and laugh with me in the dream. And the second day I will see my period, no matter how many months. I was provoked. I was seated on my chair, rocking the chair. I said, say it again. He said, a small child. How many times? Several times. I said, okay. Here is a small boy of God. I have smiled at you now. The next pregnancy, we stay. Amen. The lady has to come back for me to lay hand for family planning to work in her life. <laughs> what is her name here? I forgot. It's Lucy. Something fee something. Something fee something. I had to lay hand because if we fix family planning, the planning will turn to new trend. When I lay hand on you, <laughs> any family planning pill you swallow, it becomes a nutrient for fertilization. Don't come near me when you, <laughs> when you are not looking for a child. <laughs> Praise God. What do you use? I use nothing. I just speak. Hallelujah. I just speak. He said we perform. He will confirm the word of his servant. So now that I know, I speak what he put in my mouth. It is not the right of Wally alone. We are all son of God. We have equal right. 
go and speak to your situation. Make your release. One day in Bombolulu, we were missionary here, and we just came. We came with only our bag, nothing much. I don't even think we have three shoes. And I love watching, and I was still a footballer, crazy that time. And then one day, we were just there, nothing in the house. We only have plastic chair and a plastic table and mattress on the floor, no cutting, nothing. And then, I, I, there's, there's a place they call Spot here in, uh, in Bombolu. There used to be a satanic bomb there. There used to be a bomb. So I wasn't used to your kind of matatu. So I, I was standing. I don't know how, what I was doing. I lost my weight when the matatu entered there. So I used to type crepe bandage on my waist to stand to preach. And after that uh, incident, I told God I need a car. And one day in the evening, I told Pastor, is it Kalu or Karanja? I said, prepare the blood. Let's walk around this house and call for those things that we needed. You rent a house, there is a socket and there is no television there you are watching. That socket is barren. Talk to the socket because when they were giving you the house, they increased the price because it has electricity. He said, nothing shall be barren in your house. So we started sprinkling the blood. We went to the gate. I opened door. I said, Can you drive in? Sprinkle everywhere, all the rooms. Somebody in Nairobi sent us a television and a video machine. I don't know the person till today. You know what he said? He went to Nairobi office and said, I learned that there are missionaries in Mombasa who have just arrived. I need to send them television and a video machine. A week after that, I think we are in Little Theater, I was standing on the road and a man was driving by and then he said he saw me standing and he said why should I be driving and a pastor is standing out there. David Wakoli. And then he find out my house. He doesn't know my house. He find out where we live. He said he was so happy he's coming to give us his car. But the Lord told him, if you give him your car, everybody know your registration. Buy him a new car. And he bought me a new car after believer's class. I just walked and I got home. A car is there. Because we had the car to come. Generator came. Keyboard came. It is not the reserve of one person. I will give you a mouth. Every child of God that has a mouth has ability to make a release. What do you want? Rise up on your feet. What do you want God to release for you? Ask God to make a release. Ask God. Send forth my favor. Send forth my favor. Lord, we command financial major breakthrough for this ministry. Financial major breakthrough for this ministry. We release it. You said the gold and the sliver, they are yours. Place it in the hand of your faithful son who will deliver it in form of tithe, in form of offering, in form of project, in form of goodwill. I command the abundance of heaven to begin to reign to the life of every faithful member. Miracle child in this assembly. Miracle marriages. Miracle marriages. Miracle marriages. I command my daughters in Nairobi, in Mombasa, in Malindi, wherever they are, in Okunda, in Jalingo, every curse upon your life, I remove them and announce you and show you to your spouse wherever they are. All kind of favor, favor of healing, favor of deliverances. In the name of Jesus, I call for fulfillment. I call for fulfillment for all BCI members. I call for fulfillment. I made your release today. I declare open door before you today. I declare heaven to smile at you today. Thank you, faithful father. I named my children before they were born. There was no one that arrived here and we are looking for name. Daniel, Deborah, Dorcas, we lost divine. I name all of them. Make a release. Make a release. Wake up in the night and call your destiny. 
and say bear fruit in the name of Jesus my destiny bear fruit the destiny of our members open up make a release open up you must go forward hallelujah so what do you do swallow the word then it becomes easier to vomit feed on the wall you see Genesis 1 the spirit of God move over the water you can't release what you have not consumed you can't I kept on telling God when we came here the art is of the law and the fullness thereof the art is of the law and the fullness thereof call it those things that be not as though they are Look, no future come by coincidence. They are released. If until you release it, you can't wear it. So what are you releasing? Thank you, man. What are you releasing? Don't get angry. I have five or six car parked in my house. Ask her. I was releasing them when we had nothing. She would tell me, Ma, I'm going to saloon. And she would wake me up. I said, well, give me the khaki there. I say, I'm talking you. So she will laugh. I say, we have cars. Yeah. So far, I have driven 18. Yeah. How can God give me 18 and forget Mimo? Yeah. Except Mimo refused to release her own. Yeah. It's not a partial God. What he do for one, he can do for all. Yeah. Look at your neighbor and say, you have ear. Yeah. And I have. Yeah. So it means anything you have. Yeah. I have my own. What are you releasing? Wake up in the night and call yourself out of grave or poverty. Wake up in the night and bless your children. I told God, Papa, the delight, the four children you gave me, none of them will suffer. They will walk through life as if life is an easy passage. And the same I pray for your children because they are my grandchildren. I decree none of your children will suffer. From now, favor will follow those children. Amen. Listen to this. Almost all my children enjoy scholarship. Amen. Almost all. Supernatural people pay free for them. The first day the light enters school, somebody pay. Amen. Why should your children suffer when my own didn't suffer? And it's my grandchildren. I decree for every parent here. Amen. As many of you that believe in me. Amen. Everything my children enjoy. Your children will enjoy double. Yeah. And that means everybody will have children. Yeah. My prayer must not remain on the earth. Yeah. That means every member of BCI, yeah. you will be the one that says it's enough. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. As your children are finishing from university, job is waiting. Yeah. Was Papa this, did he stay home for four months? I doubt up to four months. Why will your children suffer? I think the grace is becoming better and better. Amen. Whatever any of my children enjoy, Amen. your children will enjoy double. Amen. But please, be crazy like me. Amen. Wake up in the night and begin to make release. Amen. No more difficulty in business. Amen. I will make choices in business. Amen. I will not get crash. Amen. King will begin to look for me. Because of my talent. Amen. Look, Abigail, you and your husband, get ready. Amen. Get ready. Amen. Listen, none of you is permitted to suffer anything I didn't suffer. Amen. There were hundreds of pastors in Winner. Almost all of them did the interview. But I was not interviewed. Amen. I was not, she's here. I was not interviewed. Yeah. I didn't apply. Because the one with favor don't write application. Yes, sir. I was just call. Wally, how are you? Are you there? Yes. Yes, sir. I said, okay, tomorrow be on your way to Maduguri. We look for vehicle by all means. I arrived. All I was asked, why, did you, why didn't you apply? I said, sir, where I am in the village, I'm okay. I said, you are okay? Okay, what of if we send you out? I said, sir, if you send me, I will go. That was my interview. Nobody said, write your name. Where is your grandmother? When did he die? That's all. And that's what I pray for my son. And Papa did never did the interview. 
it didn't have application. You don't need pr protocol if you are a child of God. Amen. Protocol are broken for the child of God. Amen. Jesus brought protocol. He came out of the grave without undertaker. Amen. Nobody dug the grave. He came out. Amen. You are coming out. Amen. You will be sent for. You will be sent for. You will be sent for. Amen. You won't struggle. Amen. God will begin to prepare special passages Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. I have released the word of God. Like Jacob blessed his son, I bless every one of you. From now, enjoy easy passage. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lift up your hand and give thanks to the Almighty. Appreciate him. Open your mouth. Thank him for a new beginning. Thank him for a dawn of a new day. Appreciate him. Glorify him. Exhort him. Lift up your hand. Begin to thank God for a new life. Open your mouth and say, Lord, I thank you for a new life. See it coming. Thank him for it. I thank you for a new experience. I thank you for a visitation. I thank you for reconstruction. I thank you for open door. I thank you for a new beginning. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, faithful Father. In Jesus' precious name, there shall be a new beginning for you. Starting from Sunday, we'll be hearing your testimony. Your testimony and your testimony shall be real. The communion tonight is blessed in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And as you partake of this, grace to eat the word of God. Amen. After he gave them the communion, they knew him in the breaking of the bread. You begin to know the word of God. And as you know it, you begin to make a release. Amen. So shall it be. The communion is blessed. And as they knew him at the breaking of bread, you begin to see Jesus on the pages of the Bible. And that will make a tremendous impact in your life. In Jesus' precious name. Take your seat. Mimi na taka ushirika na wewe Ewe roho Mimi na taka ushirika na wewe Roho Mimi na taka ushirika na wewe Ewe roho Mimi na taka ushirika na wewe Mimi na taka
As we give thanks to the Lord tonight, Father, thank you for the release of power. We give you praise for your word that came powerfully. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. What a night. I am telling you the truth. Thank you. Thank you, sir. It is a, a service that is so loaded. So loaded and very informative. All that he has shared with us is really so timely. And I believe we are going out there to keep on making release at every phase of our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. While God's servant was ministering, he said, if you are born again, you are Abraham's seed. And whatever Abraham enjoyed, we are also qualified to enjoy. And among other things that Abraham enjoyed, he mentioned one of them. There was a uh, barrenness in their family. By the time came, he was released from that spirit of barrenness. The entire lineage of Abraham was released from the force of barrenness. If you also look at the life of Abraham, among other things, one of the things that Abraham enjoyed is supernatural provision. A time came he needed to offer his only begotten, his only son, Isaac, as an offering. And because his heart was knitted with God, because of how much Abraham loved God, Abraham could not compromise. When he had God ask him to give his only son, Isaac, Abraham took off early in the morning to take that son and offer him as a sacrifice. That simple demonstration of that depth of love moved heaven on behalf of Abraham. The Bible says when he was ready to slaughter Isaac on that altar of sacrifice, a voice cried out from heaven. He said, Abraham, now I know. God said to him, I now know. And that was the same time pronouncements of blessings were made over his life. So if you and I are the seed of Abraham, that same pronouncement is available for us. How will we walk into it? We walk into it by presenting our own Isaac in form of our offering unto the Lord. That God will be so pleased with our seeds until he calls out from heaven that now I know in blessing I will bless you and in multiplication I will multiply you. Do you know that you and I are part of the multiplication that God pronounced for Abraham on that altar of sacrifice? So God is about to pronounce a multiplication blessing for someone here today. I want you to bring out a qualitative offering do you know it was not a leftover that Abraham gave? He gave Isaac. It was not Ishmael. No wonder he moved the heart of God. If you want to hear a voice from the throne of grace, before this prophetic fast of the fourth month is over, I would like you to bring out your Isaac. We all have an Isaac. Are you ready to give your Isaac this evening? So bring out your Isaac tonight in form of your offering because you are in love with God. And lift it up above your head. If you're paying your tithe, we are combining the two together. And tell the Lord, what have I that I cannot give you? What have I that I cannot honor you with? Father, I recognize that everything that I have came from you. 
You are the source of every blessing that we have. Therefore, I lift my offering before you today. This represents my own Isaac in this prophetic fast of the fourth month. Lord, as you receive these offerings from our hands, just like a voice cried out from heaven, call out from heaven, and say to Abraham that now I know. And there was an immediate supernatural provision from heaven. Lord, as you receive these offerings from our hands today, let there be a sudden supernatural provision that will meet up every other need that is pending. Let there be a supernatural provision from above that will settle every bill that is pending. Father, because we know you are not a tax master, no one can partner with you and go zero. We are partnering with you in this prophetic fast of the fourth month with our offerings. Father, we know we are enlisted for multiplication. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Let's give our offering with joy as uh, choir leads us in praise. Glory turn it around. I have seen my God turn it around. There are so many, many, many times in my life that I see my God turn it around. Yes, I know. I know my God will turn it around. I have seen my God turn it around. There are so many, many, many times in my life I have seen my God turn it around. Oh, yeah. around Amen. announcement time formation time say the prophetic fast of the fourth month continues tomorrow Saturday and Sunday you are asked to fully participate schedule as follows Saturday service time 3 p.m. East Africa time it will also be feet washing join us this coming Sunday in our end of April Thanksgiving service it shall also be our covenant day of healing and deliverance. If you are happy, put your hands together for the Lord. The service starts at 8 a.m. East Africa time. And remember, the worker service time is 7.15 a.m. All our services are, are to empower you to divine identity, endeavor to attend all, and do not forget to share the testimonies of the great acts of God on this mountain. Invite your hearers to our services. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. Amen. So God, you have the privilege of watching the service over and over. Pick up your responsibility and begin to make your release. And I see every one of us enjoying the abundance of God. Let's rise up on our feet and let's share the goodness. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life and we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. The Lord God is our son and our shield. He will give us grace and glory. No good thing will he will hold from us as we walk uprightly. We are restored to power, to dominion, to honor, and to dignity. Amen. 2022 is my year of divine identity. Every identity heaven represents will find practical expression in my life. Men shall no longer look at me and ask where is my God. 
Because the tag of divine identity is placed on my forehead, my life shall be characterized with signs and wonder. Amen. God bless you. See you tomorrow. Make sure you are